Hello my schoolers, this is my school channel and my name is Abdullah. For this video lesson, we are going to still continue on the topic triangles and polygons. So in this topic, we are going to go further, right? We are going to discuss other kinds of polygons. So you don't want to go anywhere because we are going to examine their properties and solve some examples as well to further understand this concept. So do not go anywhere, stay with us and we will be right back. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So we have polygons. So let's look at some descriptions or definitions of polygons. So look at this. Polygon. Poly means many, right? So we have gone that talks about corners. You know, just like when you come to biology, bio means life and logi, which is the logos means um, study, so study of life. So right here, we have polygon. That is many corners. Right, so look at some um, definition and characteristics. A shape, a polygon is actually a shape that is two-dimensional. It is a 2D shape that is flat, right? And of course, it is closed and it is bounded by straight sides, at least three straight sides. Okay, so that is very applicable. Then we have characteristics, you know, it includes triangles, squares, rectangles, kites, hexagons, nonagons, and what have you. All right, so we have examples here. You can see some displays and you can see these are non-example. Why? If you notice from here, these are not actually closed, right? And this is not two-dimensional. So you can see this, okay, does not look like the concept of what we've been dealing with earlier when we started off with geometry, you know, 2D shapes and 3D shapes. So definitely a polygon is 2D shape. Let's have the next slide. So... A polygon is a closed figure in a plane, right, that is formed by connecting line segments, endpoint to endpoint. So this, these are endpoints. You know, you are connecting these lines or line segments, endpoint to endpoint. And each segment, they intersect exactly two others. Do we see that right here? So these are sides, right? So you can call them edges. And then these are vertex. This is vertex, right? So we are good to go. So let's have the next slide. So like we mentioned earlier, polygons, you know, we are talking about many corners. So we can actually classify polygons or describe polygons by the number of sides, right, present. So look at this. So depending on the number of sides, you know, we have triangle that tells you three angles, right, and it has three sides, one, two, three. We have quadrilateral that is four sides, right, one, two, three, four. Do we see that right here? Pentagon, five sides. We have one, two, three, four, five. You can start counting from here in no particular order, right? Hexagon, six sides. Heptagon, seven. Octagon, uh, we have um, uh, eight. Nonagon, nine. Decagon, ten. We have eleven, twelve, and what have you. So do you see that? So you can actually do a description based on the number of sides. The next slide. So we can also describe um, polygons or classify polygons, you know, based on certain concepts. You know, we can actually refer to the concept of a, a convex polygon, a concave polygon. Now, look at a convex polygon. It has no interior it has no interior angle greater than 180 degrees. So that tells you that its interior angles, you know, uh, they are lesser, right, than 180 degrees. And if you look at a convex polygon, when you are trying to look at the con concave and the convex, also look at the comparison. You know, when you are trying to connect. You know, two um, end points together, you see that it actually flows outside of the shape, right? So that is one way to actually examine a concave um, polygon. So you have in a concave, it has one interior angle greater than 180 degrees. So you can see that so in the whole expression. So we also have the concept of the simple and the complex polygon, right? So simple does not have self intersecting sides. So this, uh, this is a very, very good presentation. Regarding that, look at the complex, you know, we have several intersecting sides, we can see them. So we have the regular and the irregular polygon. So as we move further in the video, you will see now some kind of examples that talks about or that mentions, right, um, a regular polygon and a regular polygon and what have you. So look at an irregular polygon, does not have congruent sides and interior angles. Therefore, a regular polygon, it has congruent sides and interior angles. So that is the interior angles and the sides, of course. You know what I mean? 
very, very well. So they are equal, they are good to go. So let's go ahead for the next slide. Okay, so I'm still describing um, different forms of polygons. You know, we talk about the regular polygon, that is, it is both equilateral, you know, the sides, of course, and it is both um, equiangular, that is a regular polygon. It's, it, it comprises the two concepts together. So you can see the angle side one. So, but if you want to be very distinct, right, we talk about equilateral polygon, you know, it has all sides congruent. All of the sides, they are congruent, that is, they are equal. Right, they are the same, so you can see they are actually the same. But their angles are not, so they are equilateral. So lateral talks about side. So equal lateral, equal sides, okay, but not equal angular. So the angles are not equal, but the sides are equal. Then we now have the equiangular polygon. It has all its angle equals, but not the sides. So you can see the angles are actually equal, but not the sides. Right. Then we now have a regular polygon whereby all sides and all angles are equal. So that is where we have the compilation to get that. So let's go ahead. The next slide. Okay, so we have um, certain theorems that we should be familiar with regarding polygons. You know, we have the theorem regarding the interior and the exterior, right, basically. So let's look at the interior. So the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a convex polygon, right, with n sides is actually n minus 2 dot 180, right? So some presentation will just tell you that um, probably um, 2n minus 4 then times 90 degrees is actually the same thing. You know, if you bring that to outside, 2 times n, that is 2n. 2 times minus 2, that is minus 4. Then 2 times 90 gives you 180. Do we see that right there? So whatever the presentation gives you, you are still good to go. So that is for the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a convex polygon. Let's have the next slide. This is a typical example, which we will, of course, work with later in this video. So look at this. The sum of interior angle for an n-sided polygon is actually n minus 2 times 90 degrees. So you can see some presentation, like I mentioned, you have 2n minus 4 times 90 degrees, or right angle. You are still saying the same thing, right? Then we have, for a regular polygon, the size of each interior angle is actually this. So you will just take this formula and divide it by the number of sides. So if the number, if we are talking about uh, probably uh, hexagon, Right, hexagon, that is six side. That would be six minus two, that is four, right? That's six minus two, that is four. Four times one, it's that will give you uh, the sum of the interior angle. But if you're not talking about a particular angle, right, the sum of each angle in that regular polygon. So you would just say six minus two, that is of course four over six times 180. Do you see that now? So that will be um, six here, one, six in 180, that is 30. So 30 times four, that is 120. So each angle in an hexagon, in a hexagon rather, you know, is actually 120 degrees. So that is what you use to calculate for just an angle, right, in a regular polygon. But some of the interior angles, all of them, you have this presentation. So we are going to go to the next slide. So the next theorem that we should also consider is the theorem regarding the exterior angle. You know, the sum of the exterior angle of any polygon is 360. So the sum of the exterior angle is 360. It should sum up to um, 360. And you know how these exterior angles are actually being made, you know, when there's an extension, right, from an end point. So you have it that way, or from a point where there is a vertex, and you have it right there. So the sum of this should give you 360. You can see this looks like a triangle. So you can see the expression, you have another shape right here. So these are exterior angles just outside the inside of the polygon. So the sum of the exterior angles of them, all of them, should give you 360. Each one, you just divide it by this, right? So if you're talking about how many, how many sides do we have right here? Uh, look at this, we have one, two, three, four. So you can see we have A, B, C, D. So that would be 360 divided by 4, that is 90. So each exterior angle is actually 90 degrees. You can see the formula in application. Very easy, right? So let's move to the next item. So we have quadrilaterals, you know, any closed four-sided figure. You know, quadrilaterals are types of um, polygons, you know, but this time around they are just four-sided. So if it is more than four-sided, you talk about pentagons, you know, you talk about uh, hexagons, you talk about heptagons and the like. So once a polygon is four-sided, we refer to it as what? A quadrilateral. All right, so we have examples. We have your parallelogram, we have your rhombus, we have your square, we have your rectangle, we have your trapeze. And there are properties attached to each of these um, quadrilaterals. So let's move for the next slide. 
Okay, so we can see a polygon, just a polygon with four sides, you know, and we're talking about 360 degrees. So some of the interior angles of any convex uh, quadrilateral should give you 360 degrees. So some of the angles inside, so that, this tells you that 90, 90, 90, that's 360, 90, 90, that's 60, 360 rather, please. So um, the sum of the interior angle of any convex uh, quadrilateral should give you 360 degrees. So that is another general property that we should know. Yes, in the next slide, please. So we look at some properties, right? So we have a square. So for a square, we can actually say a square is a kind of a regular quadrilateral, right? Okay, so something like that. You know, it has um, equal sides and equal angles. So four sides of equal length, you can say four internal right angles. So 90, 90, 90, that gives you 360. So right here, we have four internal right angles, right? 90, 90, 90. Opposite sides are of equal length. So year and year have equal length, year and year. Of equal length, so you can see some distinct properties. So we have our parallelogram. You can see opposite sides are parallel. So this is parallel to this. You know they are moving in the same direction, but they are not going to meet, right? So we have this as well as parallel to this. So opposite angles are also equal, right? So we can see that um, compilation, right? And then we have a rhombus, right? A rhombus is quite is distinct from a parallelogram and from a square, but just some kind of shift. So all four sides are the same length. Do you see? Just like a square, right? So like a square that has been squashed sideways. So it's just like probably you take a square and you do this, try to compress it. So we are good to go. So we have a trapezium or a trapezium, right? So we have two sides are parallel. Okay, so you can see the parallel sides, of course. And we have the side lengths and the angles are not equal. I'm going to explain that as we move further in this video. All right, so we have the isosceles trapezium. So we are just trying to look at some different uh, forms of uh, trapezium. So we have two sides are parallel, right? And the base angle are equal. So you can see these two sides, they're actually parallel. They're moving in the same direction, right? And the base angles are equal. So look at the base angles. These are, these are base angles, these are base angles. And non-parallel lights are equal length. We see that as well. So let's look at the kite. We're just looking at different forms of or different types or examples of quadrilaterals. So look at kites, right? You can tell that this side and this side are parallel. This and this are actually parallel. When we form angle 90 degrees here, you know, when these lines actually meet. So two pairs of adjacent sides are of equal length. So we can see that the shape has an axis of symmetry. So we can see the axis of symmetry right there. Then we have the regular quadrilateral. No sides are equal in length and no internal angles are equal. So this is a very good uh, regular quadrilateral. This is a very good irregular quadrilateral. You can see just four sides. One, two, three, four. No matter what you do. So a uh, quadrilateral basically has four sides and other properties as well. So let's look at some things attached to quadrilaterals. Okay, so we have, um, you know, we mentioned a parallelogram. It's actually an example of a quadrilateral, right? So let's look at parallelograms are actually um, being fixed, right, on parallel lines. Okay, so look at this concept. So we have, you can see these parallel lines right here. Okay, so look at this very carefully. So in A, B, F, D, so this is A, B, F, D. So you can see this compilation. Just look at it closely. A, B, F, D. So we can see this. They actually form a parallelogram. All right. So look at this. We have D, F is parallel to A, B. So D, F is parallel to A, B. So we are looking at the uh, parallelogram that is actually embedded. The parallelograms embedded right here. So we have this. Just take note of this first. All right. So uh, we have, and we have B, F is parallel to A, D. So you can see your BF is actually parallel to AD. So you can see how the lines are actually running. So basically, without even looking at this um, explanation, you can tell that these opposite sides, right, they are equal, right? So those both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So we are talking about parallel sides. So you can see. Okay, so we have uh, ABFD is a parallelogram. Thus, ABFD and ABCE are two parallelograms. So we have identified AB. F, D, then we have A, B, C, E. So we have A, B, C, E. So basically we have the first parallelogram, then we have the next one like this. So we can see them all together. And they have the same base, A, B. So basically the reason why we are trying to consider this theorem is because we have two parallelograms that are actually built on the same base. And that base is A, B. All right. So we can see certain things being explained right here. So as we move further in the video, of course, I'm going to use an example to explain these concepts. They are very, very easy. So let's have the next slide. 
So we have the same thing that occurs for triangles, you know. We are having two triangles that are having the same base or equal bases and equal areas and lie between the parallel. So basically you are going to be seeing this. So you can see that we can actually pull out uh, triangles from here. Look at, look at one that we have right here. I have um, AD, right? I can have ADB, okay? So I think I have something like that or ABD. Oh, you can see we have a um, given triangle ABC and ABD. So I have triangle A, B, C. So you can see, you can form something like, so triangle A, B, C looks somewhat like um, something that is like uh, probably, um, you know, a triangle that's actually the same, that has all of the sides and angles looking the same, right? Look at this. So this looks somewhat like something that is, uh, that is quite like, um, well, not a right angle triangle, you know, somewhat like that. You know, this one should look like the aquatinous side if you flip it. Again, so given triangle ABC and ABD, there are two triangles on the same base. So this is the same base that they share. So we have certain um, theorems or certain um, ways that we should go about bases, you know, when bases are being shared by parallelograms or triangles, there are ways we should go about them. So I'm going to use examples as we move further in the video to explain all of these concepts. So you don't want to go anywhere. Make sure that you subscribe. And how do you subscribe? You just have to click on the link in the description below. This is going to get you to the My School website. By doing this, you are going to have access to the full video content. Do not forget to also hit the like button. Click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification for you to get informed immediately we upload the next video content just for you.